occasionally become active. When these giant Atlantean power stations become active, they create some of the Bermuda Triangle phenomenon. There's a dimensional shift, there's magnetic anomalies. Your compass is going to start spinning and go crazy. Your radio suddenly won't work correctly. Even as you look out around you, the ocean and everything looks different. Fifteen feet below us is the famous Bimini Road, the row of rectangular large stones, and the question that's always asked, are they man-made? Could they be linked to the lost city of Atlantis? We're about to go down and find out. All right, yeah, I'm, re I'm good to go. We're good to go? What do you think? We'll just jump off the back and uh, we'll be doing it. Yeah. David and I snorkel over the stones, looking for signs the road is man-made. Geologists claim the stones are just beach rock, sand that has hardened over hundreds of years. But their placement is oddly symmetrical. While these rocks have been tested by geologists, lab results have been inconclusive. All old stones are natural, so testing their age doesn't prove anything one way or another. Only tool marks could prove that the road was assembled by man. To get a better look at the stones, David dives deeper. He believes the scientific community is hesitant to believe the truth, because doing so would turn history on its head. If the Bimini Road were proven to be man-made, it would totally change academia's view of mankind in the past and civilization, pushing civilization back at least 10,000 years. Modern science is still struggling to get conclusive answers about the origins of the Bimini Road. But given Edgar Cayce's clairvoyant predictions, we enlist a psychic, Judy Cowley, to see what she thinks about the link between Atlantis and the Bimini Road. I can feel the energy of the city. I can feel the expansiveness of how large it is. It is huge. It's absolutely huge. I can feel the energy of the crystals. Judy says the mythological crystals of Atlantis are actually catalysts for the unexplained disappearances in the triangle. They are laying on their side and the sun is activating them at certain points and when it activates it and aligns it at a certain frequency it opens portals and through these portals suddenly these people go and they're living in another dimension it's like a frequency away locals say that thirty miles east of here is one of these portals the one they say flight nineteen went through they claim diving there is spooky the water is always murky even when it should be clear there are these vortex areas around the world that are portals into other dimensions and one of those appears to be here in the Bahamas. Did Flight 19 go through a vortex? Were they sucked into another dimension? If so, we have no hope for finding the planes. Coming up, one last chance to crack the code of the Bermuda Triangle. Tell uh, David that I'm not going to proceed into a thunderstorm. But the Triangle doesn't easily surrender its secrets. The conclusion, the Bermuda Triangle, startling new secrets when we come back. Whatever happened to those Avengers out over these waters 60 years ago does not happen to us. Unlike the pilots who disappeared in December 1945, two and a half hours after takeoff, pilot Rick Siegfried sees the Florida coast coming into view. We may be close to landing, but we're no closer to answering the nagging questions of what happened in the air that night in 1945. Fly that all at a thousand feet and kind of put yourself in the same position that Flight 19 was, was uh, an interesting experience. It was successful. You know, we made the last leg, which unfortunately they never had an opportunity to do that. 
And what about the theory that Flight 19 crash-landed in Georgia's Okefenokee Swamp? After searching our target area of the swamp, the best space-age technology available could not definitively answer that question. It remains entirely possible that the fate of Flight 19 may yet be found here. But for now, the secret of its whereabouts is not one the swamp will cough up. Ultimately, violent weather forces our elite team of scientists to abandon their search for the missing mariner. We don't know how long this cell is going to be here or whether it's going to be multiple cells coming through. After six days on the water, searching five square miles of ocean around the last reported coordinates of the Martin Mariner, we found nothing definitive. The fate of the Mariner is now an even bigger mystery. Yet another secret, the Triangle refuses to give up. Storms will be quite strong with the potential for speed winds to excessive lightning. Wind gusts to 60 miles an hour. A wind five with an isolated tornado. The greatest wind appears to be... Did we fail to find the Mariner because the Navy made a mistake when recording the coordinates? Or did we fail to find the Mariner because it was never there to be found? Now it becomes even more of a mystery. Maybe it just flew into space. <laughs> For the families of the men who disappeared on that December night 60 years ago, there will be no closure. Just renewed interest in the fate of the handsome young men who stare back at them from old photographs. I wish you could have found something. Then, you know, we'd have known for a fact exactly what happened and what happened to Donald. But now you tell us you found nothing in a five-mile area, you know. So, where is it? I just don't think that a void opened up and then swallowed them. But what about that strange telegram the Payanessa family received weeks after the disappearance of Flight 19? What else could possibly explain the strange and interlocking web of disappearances in this part of the world? I've heard a lot of theories, but to me it doesn't satisfy my curiosity as what has happened to all of these people and aircraft and ships. Is it possible, as many believe, that unseen and unparalleled powers are at work here? Forces that obliterate matter or teleport man and his most sophisticated machines to other dimensions? There's absolutely something going on in, in this area. I believe this power that's in the triangle is just as evolutionary as electricity. Once we learn how to harness this energy, we'll be able to travel to different stars. The possibilities are mind-numbing, the potential enormous. But one thing is certain, after bringing to bear the best science available at the dawn of the 21st century, the riddle of the Bermuda Triangle remains what it has always been, a mystery. And if the mystery can be solved, it will likely fall to some future generation to solve it. But for now, all we can do is look at these waters and wonder. I'm Lester Holt.